last, we were we defined components, factors that affect resistance, resistances in series and in parallel. We developed the formulas, but we introduced the concept of a current and a voltage splitter. Okay? Now, now we're going to start looking at circuits. Okay, let's look at just before, let's have a look at a general formula. And I prefer it V equals IR. I know that some of them are I is equal to V over R and whatever. To me, V equals IR, I can just remember that as VIR, ver, or however you want to. You can even put it into different languages if it make, makes sense as, a, a, as a, a word itself, right? So the general formula V equals IR. Please note that you have here, all right, you have here one two, three. In any circuit, they are going to give us two out of the three and we have to find the third. We've got to solve the circuit. In other words, find voltages, currents, and resistors in a, resistances in a circuit, okay? Depending upon what they've given us. And as we move on to next year and grade 12, essentially the logic remains exactly the same. It just gets a little more complex with regard to finding your way through it. But it really is quite simple, okay? The first thing is we're going to say is we're going to develop a formula for it, okay? This is all we need. This is everything, okay? This is all there is, all right? We know how to find resistance if we've got series, it's R, R plus, R plus, R plus, and if it's in power, it's 1 over R, and we don't forget to invert. That's the key, invert at the end. Okay, now let's have a look at a circuit, okay? Let's say, for example, over here, that they tell us there are six cells of two volts in series. So, we've got that, right? Three, four, five, six. So, what is the EMF of this? Or V of the terminal voltage is going to be six times two is going to be 12 volts. That is going to be V source. What do I mean by V source? I mean the velocity where, oh, not velocity, the voltage of the source, it's where the power, the energy comes from, okay? That's where, that's what we, we, it's where we get it from, okay? We get the electron flow from there. Now let's have a look here. And they tell us that this is connected as follows, okay? It's connected in like this, and then I'm going to go, there's a 10 and a 30. So let's put in a 10 and a 30, 10 ohm, and a 30 ohm over there, all right, like that. Let's say they give us an ammeter over here and an ammeter over there. They will give you A1, A2s, A3s, etc., etc., all right? Then we've got another resistor over here, all right, like so, uh, and that is a 10 ohm resistor, right? And then they've got over here, the last thing is they've got an ammeter over there. All right, that was just to link it up. And let's say they call this A1, A2, and A3. All right, there's a straightforward circuit. All right, what do we do with it? Well, we, they've, let's solve the circuit. First thing we do is we put in current, right? Use a colored pencil if you like. Put in the current, I, I. Split it, I, make sure I use the same, I1 and I2. When we get back here, it's back to I again, isn't it? Because when the two currents join up, it carries on flowing as a single current I. Because nothing's been added in between. I must equal I1 plus I2. The water went around that side and that side came back. It's the same amount of water, no extra water got added. There's been no current added. We don't do circuits like that. We do I here, and then we have I going through there. Can you see that the I is the reading on A1? 
Okay? That's what it's going to be. Okay. Now, the next thing, all right, is we say, right, step one, put in all the information given. Okay? I'm going to put, put a breakdown onto a download, I think. But put in all the information given, readings on meters, etc. right? The second is put the current from positive to the negative side. Where the current splits, split it using I1, I2, etc. Check if all of the values for resistance are given. Okay? Yes, all the values of resistance are given. Then this method says calculate the total resistance. Okay. So let's follow the current. This is the way to do it. We Here we've got parallel, which means we have to go 1 over R effective is equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 30. Okay. That's our formula for the first two are parallel. Because we're going to break this down until we've got only one resistor for the whole circuit. Okay, that's going to be 30. That's going to be 3 plus 1, which is going to be, sorry, my bad. It's going to be 4. Oh, I wish it wouldn't do that. 4 over 30 invert. R effective is 30 over 4, right? What does that mean? All right, 30 over 4 is seven and a half. Seven and a half what? Seven and a half ohms. So now I go back to my circuit, okay? Don't, don't skip these steps, right? Because you can't hold five or six resistors and where they are and what they represent in your head. Put them in. Say, right, I have replaced you with seven and a half. That's my ghost resistor, okay? Now what have I got? The circuit now actually looks like this, doesn't it? It looks at a seven and a half and a ten. Right? Now I say, right, now I've got series. So now I say my R effective is going to be seven and a half plus ten, which is seventeen point five ohms. Right? So now what have we got? We've broken the whole circuit down into this. Essentially, we have got a power source. I'm going to just draw it like that. Those dots there means the cells in between connecting. V over here is going to be equal to, uh, let me see, uh, 20 volts, sorry, 12 volts. There, and I've got one resistor over here, which is 17.5 volts. Right? We have broken the circuit down and now let's put in I for this circuit. I, I. Right? Now all that remains, what don't I know about component here? I don't know V for that component, do I? Yes, it's 12. Right? But we don't know I. All right? What do I do for the circuit? I've broken it down and I've got V equals I R, right? I is, sorry, V is 12. It's the v, source voltage or it's the same as the voltage across there. I'll explain that in, in, in a little bit. Is equal to I times 17.5. Therefore, I comes out as 0.68. Five, seven amps. Okay. No, I didn't use one that was very, uh, uh, what shall we call it? Um, 0.6857. Now it says go back and put in what you worked out. Okay. Right. Because they might ask, what is the reading on A1? So let's fill in I. I is 0 0.6857 amps. I is 0 0.6857, okay? Now, let's go to the other components, okay? Well, what don't we know? Let's say, what's possible here? Ah, okay, I don't know the voltage there. I also don't know the voltage across these two. I don't know the currents A2 and A3. Let's just re-go. I don't know the voltage across this guy. He's unknown. I don't know that. 
I don't know the voltage across the 10 or the 30, but I don't know the current. I don't know I1 and I2, do we? Right? So now what do we do? We look at the recipe, it says, go back and put in what you worked out. We've done that. They might ask, okay, go to each component. Okay, now this is critical. You go to each of the components, look for where we know two out of the three. Right? Find where we know V, I, R. Okay, one will be missing. Okay, let's have a look. No, I don't know V and I here. Okay. I know I over here, I is, whoops, let me just put it in, okay, I over there is 0 0.6857 amps. So at the 10 ohm resistor, let's just go, at the 10 ohm resistor we actually know V, right, let's look at the 10 ohm resistor. Okay. At the 10 ohm resistor, V, we don't know. I, going through there, is 0 0.6857 5, amps. And R is equal to 10. Therefore, V equals I. R, V is equal to uh, 10 times 0 0.6857 which is 6.857 volts. So now we go back and we say, right, 6.857, this is 6, 6.857 volts. Right, now, what is the next step? We put it on the diagram, okay? Now, the next is to go to the two parallel sides. I'm just going to draw them. It's a 10 and a 30. Let's just have a look here. All right. It's a 10. Remember, we had a 10 up there. And we had a 30 ohm resistor over here. And now let's put our current in. Whoops, sorry. Let's put the current in here. Red, we said that was I. And it's split into I1 and I2 over there. Okay? Now, what is important we say, right, what do we know? Yes, we do know I 1.6857. Okay? I don't know at this stage the V over here and the V over there. All right? Right. Now, but remember, what did we find? Remember, we had a, the ghost resistor was seven and a half. What does that mean? It means that we replaced those two, the 10 and the 30, with a seven and a half ohm resistor. Oh, but that means the seven and a half does exactly the same job. So instead of using the 10 and the 30, I can just use the seven and a half, can't I? So for the seven and a half, resistor, which is my resistor that replaces those two, what can we say? We can say that the seven and a half, which is this one, I've got a current of 0.6857 through it, I equals so many amps, and this is my ohm. So therefore V equals IR. So V is going to be 0 0.6857 times 7.5. And if you do that, 0.6857 times 7, 7.5, we end up with 5.14. Okay? 3. 5.143 volts. Right? So the voltage over this guy is going to be equal to 5.143. Well, therefore, what does that mean? It means that the voltage across each one of those is the same. Okay. So we go back and we write it in now. We say, right, your voltage here must be 5.143. Your voltage here must be 5.143. I'll tackle this in two minutes in a slightly different way just to show that that happens like that and show you how to remember it. 5.143 volts and 5.143.
Now we go back to these. We say, right, looking at the 10 ohm. Okay, what's next? Do I know I? No. Do we know V? 5.143 volts. Do we know resistance? Yes, it's 10 ohms. Therefore, from V equals IR, I is going to be V over R, which is going to be 5.143 over 10, which is 0 0.5143 amps flowing through the 10 ohm. Right? Now, I too, you can just go and subtract it from 0.6857, can't you? But let's work it out. Looking at the 30 ohm, okay? Do I know I? No, it's actually I2, isn't it? That was I1. I2, no. V, 5.143 volts. We know. R is equal to 30 ohms. Therefore, I2 is going to be V over R, which is 5.143 divided by 30. 5.143 over 30 is 0.1714 amps, right? And now if you add them together, okay, I'm going to add I1 and I2. I1 plus I2. I1 is 0 0.5143 plus 0 0.1714, which is going to be 0 0.6857 amps. Right? Now, let's just go back to this concept of here. Just to clarify, this we said, let's go through it. Whoops, sorry, put it in red. This is I. The same I, correct? And the same I. The water's flowing through each one. This is a, not a current splitter, this is called a voltage splitter. Voltage splitter, okay? What's happening here is that V, if I put a voltmeter there, and a voltmeter there, and a voltmeter there, like that, okay? And this is R, R1, R2, R3. Can you see? Let's have a look. Let's call that V1, V2, V3. V1 is going to be I times R1. That's V1. V2 is going to be I times R2. And V3 is going to be I times R3. So this actually is a voltage splitter. The other one where it's in parallel is the current splitter. See? This is here the current I, I1, I2, I3. This is a current splitter. Oops. This is a current splitter. Okay? Which means voltage is the same. So, V is V is V. They are all the same. Each voltage is the same. Okay? So, on the current splitter, the voltages are the same across each one. And on a, if they're in series, it's a voltage splitter, which means the current is the same through each one. Okay? And just to, 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 to highlight it, they sometimes will give you, just let's, uh, they might actually just say V over here, let's say. V over there. Right? So if they tell us V over there is 12, it means that this is 12. This is 12, that is 12. So always look and see if when you've got a current splitter, 
Look if any voltages are given, because they might hide a voltage and say, I'll give you the voltage of the one in the middle, it's 12. Immediately you can say, if you're 12, it means the one above you and the one below you is 12. So that's how to, to, to we're going to do more examples which, uh, which highlight this, okay? Right, um, now, so we've got that, okay? The other thing is this, if you go back to the example that we did, remember, let's just go back up here, okay? Let's just go back up to the example that I had. Remember, we, we worked out over here, this voltage was 5.143 over there. Remember? All right. Was that voltage, was that one. This one over here, okay, uh, Right. is going to be um, okay. Uh, okay yeah the voltages at the end of the day that you've got okay must add up to the total okay of everything let's just have a look at a circuit over here all right let's just have a look at this circuit here okay for example all right where we've got a, let's say we've got a V source over there, all right, something like that. And we have got some resistors here, very similar to the one we had, all right, okay, very similar to the one we had. We've got, let's say, this situation here, all right, like that, okay. So going back to the circuit that we had, okay, we had over here, Okay, we had on our um, on our 5.13, um, we 5.143 volts, right? Okay, we had a voltage here. Let me just change color. 5.143 volts. Okay, and on the other one over here, we worked out 6.857 volts there. Let's see what happens if we add those together. We had 5.143 plus that, 143 plus 6.857 is going to be 12 volts. It must be. Right? Why? Because the total of all the voltages, okay, I'm going to draw a circuit, okay, like this, all right? Let's say I've got a uh, power source up here, all right? And we've got a resistor here. We've got some in like this over here, okay, like that, all right? Uh, we go on another one over here. And let's say we've got another split over there with two, all right? And we go up again and we go in over there. This voltage here, let's say, is 24 volts. Okay, that is 24 volts there. What does it mean? It means that if I now go, remember, we put the current, I'm not going to solve this, but we'll do another one in, a, in, 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 in the next one, more complicated one. What we're going to do is we're going to say, right, I'm going to go, okay, and I look where I've got what. Okay, where they've given me information. Okay. This is V1, V2, V3, and over all of this, V4, right? What does this mean? It means that 24, there, the total voltage of the supply must be equal to the voltages across all the components. V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. It must be equal to the total of all the voltages across each individual component or, or parallel set of components, right? Why? Well, the voltage drop or the voltage across this resistor and this one and this one and this one, okay, must be equal to the total voltage of the battery in the circuit. Because at the end of the day, inside my remote or inside a calculator, or inside the tablet, there is only one source of EMF, 
one source of voltage. Therefore, that, that V, the voltage of the battery, must be the same as the voltages across each and every section. That's a very key thing to remember because when you're going through these circuits, right, in a lot of cases, it, it's, it's, they will leave out the voltages and you have to say, oh, but hang on, they've told me the battery voltage, therefore they've told me the voltage across resistor 1 and resistor 2, but they haven't told me across resistor 3. So what do I do? Let's have a look, just very simply, to end it off. Uh, let's say they've told us over here, we've got V equal to 18 volts, and a resistor over here. Uh, let's say over there there's a, a pair there, and maybe on the way up over here another. Okay. Now they've told us, maybe they say the reading on this voltmeter here on V1, there is equal to 8 volts. The reading on V2 is equal to um, 6 volts, right? That's all they tell us. Immediately, they don't put in a voltmeter here, let's say. But immediately, what can I say? We can say, hold on, I know what V must be there. V is going to be 18 minus 8 minus 6 V is going to be 4 volts, which means I know that it's V is 4 volts across U and 4 volts across U. Can you see the deductive logic that we need to, uh, we need to make there? Okay, um, I've got more. We're going to do some more. Um, at the, um, I've got another, blah, 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 okay, or I say always remember that, it's a critical piece of information. Okay, then we've got some more of these guys here that we're going to do. Okay, and then we're going to go on to mechanics. So, one more session on this, and then we'll uh, go on to mechanics. Um, okay, great. See you in the next session. Thanks for watching.